Okay, I guess we can get started. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's great to see everybody. Welcome to our town hall. Um, before we get started, I wanna inform you that this town hall is being recorded. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Yvonne Mejia. I'm the program coordinator for Reducing Youth Access to Tobacco Program uh, with the Community Action Partnership of Orange County. Um, here with us, we have Gabby Gregg, who is the program manager, our Vapri La Habra Adult Coalition, La Habra Teens Against Vaping Youth Coalition, and the Orange County Healthcare Agency's Tobacco Use Prevention Program, as well as the America on Track Flavors Work Group. We're excited to have you all here today um, and share a lot of valuable information. So this town hall will be primarily in, um, oh, I'm sorry, next slide, Nabila, please. Thank you. So this town hall will be primarily in English. Um, however, yeah, we are providing Spanish interpretation. You can access the Spanish room by clicking on the interpretation button located at the bottom of the screen. And by clicking on the, the interpretation button on the bottom of the screen and uh, selecting the Spanish audio. And just be sure to mute the, mute the English room so you don't hear both rooms at the same time. <laughs> um, the instructions for how to use the, chat, uh, the interpretation feature will be located in the chat box. Next slide, please. So today in our agenda, we will be going over the meeting rules uh, learn about healthy stores for healthy communities data, public opinion survey data, smoke-free parks, and then we'll take a five-minute break. After our break, the America on Track Flavors Workgroup will uh, share a success story from Buena Park, and Gabby and I will share a uh, program roadmap and end goal, um, and, the, and we'll end with an evaluation survey. We'll also be hearing from our youth and adult coalition members. Um, throughout today's meeting. So with that said, let's move to the meeting rules, please. Next slide. Oh, you got it. <laughs> so we ask that you please keep your microphone on mute. Um, mute your phone unless you are speaking. Enter questions in the chat box um, with your name, and we will answer them throughout the meeting and during the, the questions and answer segments. Please look in the chat box for instructions on how to use the captions or the interpretation feature. Um, and this next rule is my favorite. <laughs> Please remember to express kindness and respect to each presenter. If you agree or if you support something being, being said, um, you can use the reaction features um, at the bottom of the screen, like the heart or the clap, thumbs up. <laughs> and lastly, please direct message Gabby or myself for any concerns. Next slide, please. So up first, we have Deepa Shinadi, from a research specialist from the Orange County Healthcare Agency, who will share data collected by the Healthy Stores for Healthy Communities uh, store survey. Um, a Spanish copy of the presentation will be provided in the chat box. So Deepa, please take it away. Oh, Deepa, you need to unmute. <laughs> Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, I'm gonna wait till the slides are shared and then I will begin. Okay, thanks, Nabila. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Deepa Shanadi and I'm with the Tobacco Use Prevention Program at the Orange County Healthcare Agency. And today I'm gonna to share some data that we collected from the Healthy Store Healthy Community Survey in La Habra from stores that sell tobacco products in La Habra. So this presentation is meant to show uh, what is sold in stores and how it can affect the availability of and access to tobacco products, including vapes to the public, especially to the youth. Um, this presentation will aim to demonstrate the need in La Habra to limit youth access to tobacco. So we're gonna start off with the tobacco retailer landscape. And this slide shows um, the number of tobacco retailers in La Habra in 2020, which was 67 tobacco retailers. And this data is from the California Department of Tax and Fees Administration, which provide the tobacco uh, licensing data for us. Uh, and then 
uh, the next row, it shows that there's 1.1 retailers per 1,000 population in La Habra. And what I want to point out is, is the density of retailers to the population is higher than um, the density in Orange County and then also the state of California. In Orange County, it's considered about 0.7 retailers per 1,000 population or 7 to 10,000. And then in California, it's about 8 retail retailers to 10,000 population. And this data is available online from the website that I listed on this slide. And if you put in your address, you can see where the tobacco retailers are uh, to where you live. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna continue a little bit more about the density of tobacco. Oops. Okay, so there's 36% of the retailers are within a thousand feet of a school. So which means that a thousand feet, it means about three, uh, the length of three football fields. And then another way to look at it is 64% of the schools are within a thousand feet of a retailer. And this is in La Habra. And both of these metrics or statistics or indicators are higher than the same metrics for Orange County and California. Next slide. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be talking about the healthy stores for a healthy community data. So this campaign was the statewide campaign in 2019 from the state California Tobacco Control Program. And it was the goal of the program was to improve the health of all Californians through changes in the retail environment. So it was a statewide collaboration between uh, tobacco use prevention programs in all counties, nutrition, alcohol, STD partners um, in all the counties. Next slide. Okay, so how did we collect the data? So in 2019, we carried out some in-person visits to stores with tobacco licenses. We used a state survey, which meant it was a standardized survey. All, uh, all the counties or uh, all the stores in um, Orange County, we used the same survey. And so it was carried out by Capo C and then also us, the Orange County Healthcare Agency. So in 2019, about 1,128 stores were surveyed in Orange County. And then in La Habra, 41 stores specifically were able to be surveyed. And what I mean by surveyed is that they were mostly in-store observations and each survey took about um, 15 minutes to complete. Okay. So what were these uh, 41 stores? So I just wanna say that um, our census had about 69 stores in 2019, but we were able to go into 41 stores. Uh, when I say we were able to go in, either the store was closed or um, it didn't exist or we weren't allowed in or something happened. So out of those 41 stores, 32% uh, of them were liquor stores, followed by 20% of them were gas station or booth, followed by supermarket grocery store. And then other here means uh, a drive through convenience stores. And then 5% of the stores were considered a drugstore pharmacy and the remaining 2% were classified or categorized as a small market, deli or produce market. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the findings of the data. So what did we find? So 95% of the stores visibly display tobacco products. So why is this a problem or why does this matter? So tobacco products are usually easy to see in the store, or are usually very easy to see in the stores that sell them. Um, and then usually stores that were visited display their tobacco products from anyone to see. So displaying them uh, right at the counter uh, allows for impulse purchases of tobacco products. And then furthermore, visually displaying these tobacco products are detrimental to youth, youth uh, to the youth who are very impressionable, who, which result in um, impulse purchases. Next slide, please. Okay. So continuing with the findings, uh, over nine in 10 stores, 93% uh, sold flavored tobacco products compared to 82% of the stores statewide. So all the counties collected their data and then it was also analyzed at the state level combining all of the county's data. So 
with some of the findings, we can compare it to the state. So as you can see with this indicator, uh, the indicator is higher for La Habra than um, statewide. So what does this mean? Flavored tobacco products are usually marketed to kids um, and flavored means candy, mint, or fruit. Uh, so a 2015 Journal of the American Medical Association article stated that 81% of youth who have ever used tobacco products started with the flavored tobacco product. Um, and then continuing with that, so evidence also has made it clear that flavored tobacco products have the greatest appeal to, to young um, and that to young new smokers. So this is why this finding is important. Okay, so continuing on, nearly eight in 10 La Habra stores surveyed or 76% sold vaping products compared to just 55% of stores statewide. So once again, the data for La Habra is higher than um, this than the statewide data or for the state of California. So the youth uh, vaping rate for California is about 11% and then for uh, Orange County, it's about 13%. So the data for Orange County is higher. Uh, next slide. Okay. Another finding that we saw for La Habra was that nearly nine in 10 La Habra stores surveyed 87% sold single little cigars or cigarillos compared to just 46% of stores statewide. Um, so selling cigars individually makes them cheaper and then easier for the youth to buy. Cigarettes, on the other hand, cannot be sold individually due to state and federal law, but these laws do not apply to cigars. Okay. So another item that we looked at was ads. Um, so more than one in three or 34% of the stores in La Habra have tobacco ads placed at kids level or under three feet uh, and or are placed near kid-friendly items such as candy or toys. So the pictures here demonstrate that. These are not necessarily from La Habra, but um, this is what we mean. Uh, so, and this tactic is used to increase access to children. And these pictures, as I said, illustrate this point. So once again, federal law prohibits tobacco advertising through television or magazines or billboard advertising, but it does not prohibit advertisements in point of sale locations such as stores. Okay. So this is just a snapshot of some of the data that I'm sharing. So if anybody's interested in um, any more data, uh, please contact our program director. So any more data are on the HSHC survey or the methodology um, or the tobacco use prevention program itself. Here is um, the information for our um, director. So I think we have a few minutes left for any questions or comments. Um, and then after that, I will hand it over to Casey who will talk about a public opinion survey that was recently carried out this past summer about um, public support for a, a tobacco retail flavors license ban. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions in the chat box? Any comments? Yes, Gia? Oh, we can't hear you, Gia. Yeah. I'm gonna have a big echo. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make this brief. Um, do we, uh, did, did the presenter that uh, the presenter uh, told us uh, when was this uh, investigation done for La Habra? 2019. So it's fairly data. So it's fairly fairly uh, uh, new, right? The, yeah. the information you provided us. Okay. So that's alarming. So thank you for, for sharing the presentation with us. Great question. Thank you, Gia. And thank you, Deepa, for the presentation. Do we have any additional questions or comments in the chat? Okay. 
to wait a minute. Okay, thank you, Deepa. So now um, help me welcome our next speaker who will share her story about how tobacco use has impacted her. Please welcome the Free La Habra Coalition member, Adela Chavaria. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you to the City Council and to Vapi La Habra for hearing my story. And my story really begins with my father, who was a lifelong smoker. Um, I can't remember him not smoking. He uh, smoked camels. And for those of you in the know, know that those were pretty strong cigarettes, not filtered or anything else. You got the real deal tobacco. He smoked heavily, as I said, and uh, he ended up dying at what would be considered today a very early age at 63. And this is after he had triple bypass to clear the arteries. He died of emphysema. And up until the last time, I mean, he had gotten out of the hospital with his triple bypass. And still he was asking people and trying to bribe people to go to the store and get him some cigarettes. So it was difficult. Um, because of that influence, I have six siblings and three of them have been pretty heavy smokers. Uh, the first sister is uh, married and she and her husband both smoked. She was able to quit at the age of 50. That was something she determined she wanted to do. And although her husband didn't smoke quite as much, uh, he tried to quit lots of times, but because she didn't quit, he would once again start up. And it really took her, I think, mentally just saying, that's it, when I'm 50, even a week before, she was still smoking. She was waiting till that actual day to stop. But it was difficult. And I would literally have to pick out what clothes I wanted to wear when I went to visit because I knew that that clothes could not be worn again. It had to come off my body and directly into the washing machine. It just smelled so much. The second sister that smoked uh, quit when she turned 40. She started quitting a little bit earlier. But again, it was just the mental preparation that said, this is it, I don't wanna do it anymore. Uh, they have that strong smoker's cough that doesn't leave you, even though they have quit. That cough stays with you. My brother, who was also a smoker, continues to be a pretty heavy smoker. So that influence, once that smoking begins, it's extremely difficult to, to let it go. And you can see, even after 20, 30 40 years of smoking, when a person determines that they want to stop, which ultimately we hope they do, it's still a difficult road. So the best road is not to start at all. And I think that by supporting a vape free La Habra, we can do that with our youth because they're our future. We need to make sure that our future remains healthy so that they can lead when their time comes. And that's my story. Thank you for listening. So beautifully said. You're getting a lot of round of applause in the, in the chat. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you, Adela, for sharing your story. Um, it resonates with me um, and I'm sure many others. So thank you. I'll wait for the round of applause. <laughs> okay. All righty. Next slide, please, Nabila. Up next, we have Casey Makarev, a research specialist consultant uh, for Harder & Company Community Research. Um, she will be presenting public opinion survey data. This um, Spanish interpretation for this presentation can be located in the chat box. Casey, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. 
Um, hi, all, and thank you so much for having me this evening. Um, my name is Casey Macarith, and I am from Harder & Company Community Research. Um, we are an independent um, research consulting firm um, and have been working with the Tobacco Use Prevention Program for several years now um, to evaluate their tobacco prevention um, efforts. Um, as part of the evaluation, we actually conducted a public opinion survey on the general population um, in two Orange County jurisdictions, both Buena Park and La Habra. Next slide, please. So the survey collected data on community knowledge, attitudes, and perceptions regarding ways to reduce access to tobacco and vape products and approaches to monitor the tobacco retail environment. Namely, the survey asked about participant knowledge and opinions on the sale of tobacco and vaping products, as well as policies for the locations that sell these products. Um, we partnered with Social Science Research Center at Cal State University to conduct the survey um, with adults 18 and older living in the city of um, La Habra. And as this slide portrays, there were 4,528 phone calls that were attempted. Out of those attempts, 203 surveys um, were completed with La Habra residents. Um, 45 surveys um, were completed in Spanish with 158 surveys completed in English. Next slide. Um, so the, these first or these next few slides um, will actually um, display the demographics of residents who participated in the survey. Again, a total of 203 La Habra residents were surveyed. Um, for your information, as we go throughout the slides, you will notice that the ends um, are a little different. Um, and that is only because the number responding to each question varies. So it just means that not everyone um, responded to every question. Um, in terms of uh, gender, um, you can see from this slide, um, that it was basically a 50-50 split. Um, so 49% of respondents who completed the survey were female and were also male. Um, in addition, you had 1% each who were um, trans female um, or trans male. Next slide. Um, so in terms of age, um, this slide shows um, that most um, respondents were um, between the age of 25 and 44, so 45 percent, and another 36 percent were 45 to 64 years old. Next slide. Great, so when looking at um, the race and ethnicity of our respondents, um, this slide shows um, that over half were Hispanic Latino, so 53 percent, followed by 28% white, 10% Asian, 7% um, multi-race, and then the rest were under 5%. So the next few slides then I get into the actual survey results. Um, so this first slide shows that 80% of the respondents in La Habra feel it's easy for youth to buy tobacco and vape products. That's pretty high. Um, and as a con comparison, um, there's, you can see the little text box at the right of the screen as well. And it shows that um, at the state level, 49% um, of high school students believed it would be easy to obtain cigarettes. And 58% of high school students believe it would be easy to obtain e-cigarettes. So, you know, please just make note that the survey population um, is different. You know, our population, as I showed before, were, of course, all adults over the age of 18. For the state, this population is high school students. But, you know, and nonetheless, um, it is like almost 30% more of the population um, or of the residents in La Habra that, you know, uh, uh, completed this survey feel that or and or report that it is easy 
um, for youth to buy these products in La Habra. Next slide. Great. So 83% actually believe selling tobacco vape products near schools, parks, or other places youth gather makes use more likely. I think that makes sense. Next slide. Um, and 66% believe tobacco and vape products should not be sold within a thousand feet of schools. And again, by a thousand feet, that's about the length of three football fields. Um, so again, you know, for comparison, um, at the state level, um, you can see in that text box down below that there are seven in 10 residents, so 70% of residents at the state level believe that tobacco products should not be sold near schools. Um, so you can actually see our percentage at 66% is very similar to that at the state level. Um, so there's, you know, majority of agreement um, that these products sh should not be sold near schools. Great, next slide. Um, this slide shows that 59% believe tobacco and vape products should not be sold um, within a thousand feet of parks. Next slide. And this slide, 68% believe that tobacco and vape products should not be sold within a thousand feet of just general places that youth gather. So all of these percentages are, you know, um, it, it's obviously a majority do believe that these products should not be sold near schools, near parks, and near places that youth gather. Next slide. 68% um, also believe there should be a minimum distance between tobacco vape stores um, so that they shouldn't be all kind of lined up next to each other, but there should be some distance um, between, you know, stores that are selling these products. Next slide. 79% uh, believe there should be a limit on the number of these stores in the community. And again, um, for comparison, um, for the state, you know, 61% believe that the number of stores should be reduced. Um, so please note the data point is a bit different, um, but still um, that, that almost 80% in La Habra, um, that's a pretty large percent um, that are in favor of limiting these number of stores in the community. Next slide. 85% um, support the city keeping stores from selling tobacco or vape products within a thousand feet of schools, parks, and other places where youth gather. So again, it's just kind of reiterating, um, you know, this high percentage that really do or are, are, are in favor of um, these stores, you know, not selling these products anywhere that youth um, will be. Next slide. 61% uh, of residents think the city should keep both new and existing stores from selling tobacco and vapes, again, near schools, parks, and other places where youth gather. Uh, next slide. 77% support the city keeping tobacco or vape stores from being too close to each other. So for example, like 500 feet. Next slide. Um, another 77% support the city limiting the number of stores selling tobacco or vape products. So again, these are, you know, these are pretty high percentages. Next slide. So in summary, La Habra residents support keeping a minimum distance between stores that sell tobacco, vapes, and places where youth gather reducing the number of stores that sell tobacco and vapes, and keeping store locations from being too close to each other. Next slide. And this is just a slide, you know, special thanks and shout out to the Social Science Center at um, CSU Fullerton for the data collection. It was a large um, telephone survey undertaking, so we thank them. Next slide. And lastly, just a few discussion questions. Um, you know, was there anything that stood out or surprised you about the data I just presented? Do you have any other questions? And so I will pause and...
please feel free to like unmute um, and chime in and or um, ask away in the chat box. Looks like Gia, you might have a question. Yes, I do. Um, right. Have we have we um, uh, presented this to like any uh, any council members or is this just today? Do we have any uh, representatives from from the city in this call? So I can weigh on the first part of that question, which is, I think this is the first time the data is being presented. And I would love for Nabila or Deepa to weigh in on the second part of that question. Uh, so the second part of the question being, um, has this been presented to any decision makers? Is that correct? And are there um, any on this call? Ah, I see. Uh, so, so far we have not presented. So this is the first time we're actually showing the data to any member of the public. So you are all the first to see this. Um, and as far as any decision makers or city staff on this town hall, um, I believe a Community Action Partnership of Orange County and the La Habra um, Adult Coalition had invited members of the city council, but I'm not sure if they're in attendance. Yvonne or Gabby, is that correct? I'm, not, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't recognize all of the names. <laughs> no, no city council members yet okay. from La Habra. I understand. Thank you. Great question, Gia. Uh, but we will gladly share this information that we've learned, we're learning today. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Oh, go ahead. I see another one. Hi. Uh, yeah, my name is Sunny Clark. I, um, I live in Buena Park. I'm actually mayor pro tem in Buena Park, but I came to this meeting as a neighbor, not, and also a mom with, uh, my daughter goes to Sunny Hills and she's 15 years old. Um, uh, my question uh, is, I know that city of La Habra passed, I guess the citizens voted in favor of marijuana ordinance. That's my understanding. Uh, so is there any research done? You know, it looks like the statistic uh, tells me that people view marijuana use um, pretty differently from vaping or um, tobacco use. You know, that's what I'm getting. Um, you know, so do, do you have any, um, you know, like a um, answer to that question? So currently, um, I don't, I don't believe like this survey in, in particular, you know, ask specific questions around um, marijuana use. Um, I, I am definitely hearing what you're saying, and um, I, you know, um, I'm relating to what you're saying. And I do think that that is something that future data collection um, should definitely seek um, seek out. Um, but from my and and, and I'd love for. Um, Deepa and or uh, Nabila to weigh in as well. But um, currently, unfortunately, we didn't ask a lot about marijuana at this time. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious because, you mm -hmm. know, when a city in general, the residents feel that they want to have marijuana in their, uh, in their mm -hmm. city, how would uh, they view uh, use of tobacco products or vaping products uh, be different? That's that. You know, that's the question that I had. And also, yes. also especially in the neighboring cities, um, such as Fullerton, they weren't mm -hmm. able to successfully pass their marijuana ordinance. So I would be curious uh, to know how the residents are viewing these two, uh, two issues separately. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and to be honest, I'm, I'm glad you weighed in and, um, and, and um, stated that point, because I, I do think it's a very valid, val valid point. And I do think that future research and data collection really needs to look into marijuana, like you said, as compared to um, uh, both tobacco and vape. Anything Deepa and or Nabila you would want to add to what I stated?
Hi, this is Deepa. I was just looking at the questionnaire. And it's it most it focuses on I think traditional tobacco and then also vapes. Uh, and then in HSHC, that was also the case too. Um, so it wasn't specifically on marijuana, but because of the legality of marijuana in certain jurisdiction, it does make it a little bit more complicated and tricky and how that fits into this, um, this discussion here. But I was just looking at the survey and it was just tobacco uh, and then vape products. Thank you. Any final questions? Okay, looks like we have no further questions. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. And yeah, this final slide just also has my contact information. If you do have a you know question that pops up after we leave here today, feel free um, to reach out. You can also you know reach out to Nabila or Deepa as well. Um, but again, really appreciate um, you all having me join the call and. Um, yeah, wishing you all a wonderful weekend. So thank you. Thank you, Casey. We appreciate the presentation. Thank you. Next slide, please, Nabila. And now I'll pass the microphone over to um, our La Habra Teens Against Vaping Youth Coalition member, Sarah LeCount. Sarah? Hello. Um, hello, my name is Sarah LeCount. I am 11 years old and I go to El Cerrito Elementary School. The vaping problem that I've seen in my community is now teens are starting to vape and it's highly addictive. It, I also found out that kids from 12 to 7 are using 0.5% of heroin, 2% of cocaine, 5% of hallucinating urines, 7% of inhalants, 2% of psychotherapeuts. 4.2% of cigarettes, 5.8% of alcohol binge, and 7% of pot. The problem affects me and my people I care about because before I was born, my grandpa's brother passed away due to a heart attack um, and smoking. My grandpa also smoked a bit but stopped off after almost burning my dad when he was a baby. In conclusion, tobacco can be very addicting, but if you can break away, it may save your life. Let me give a quick round of applause. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing your story. Uh, it gave me chills, honestly, hearing it. <laughs> so thank you, Sarah. All right. So up next, we're excited to have our uh, next speaker share about their efforts behind the smoke-free parks policy. Everyone, please help me welcome uh, La Habra City Parks and Rec Director, uh, David DeLeon. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Hi, David. Um, can you uh, please tell us or uh, share a bit of a story about how the smoke-free parks policy started? So um, part of our um, grant with, um, with St. Jude Medical Center, our Providence St. Jude, is that we have a policy change um, of some sort in, a, in, 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 you know, in our city. And it just so happened that we were working with um, KPOC in terms of um, improving the overall, um, you know, uh, rules related to uh, uh, tobacco products, vaping, uh, in sitting parks, parking lots, and in public buildings. We did not have an ordinance that, that really specified that, and, you know, especially when, when we had, um, um, you know, our Lily program and, and football programs, there was no ordinance that prohibited uh, people from smoking, especially when kids were around. And so um, <clears throat> we, it was, uh, in the beginning, it was at first a, a little hard because anytime you, you look at a new ordinance, um, you look at how it's going to be policed. And, and that could potentially be a big problem. In this case, uh, what we did was we mobilized the uh, youth sport organizations and um, our community services commission, as well as our Move More Healthy Committee um, and, and um, um, LA's uh, Lahaba Action Council, as, as well as other 
uh, neighborhood groups to get behind the uh, the ordinance and and help us with policing it. Um, our feeling was that once it was uh, posted, that um, our hope was that peer pressure would keep people from from using these products in our in our parks and in our uh, facilities. And uh, we we actually passed it. I'm looking at the ordinance right here. It's quite a long one in um, March of 2020, and and have have had to had have little enforcement because people have been very respectful um, when we've been out there. Uh, we haven't seen a, a real big complaint from the community, so we we venture to think that people are being respectful. But but we also included it in our sport affiliate policy, which is a policy that every U sport organization board um, um, sign off on in order to use our facilities. We have uh, both a, 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 a tobacco ordinance as well as a, a healthy food um, provision in there, uh, hoping to change the menus of the snack bars and the things that kids eat uh, during uh, their, their break. So that's that's in a nutshell how it happened. I was lucky enough to have had an intern, Desiree Quinones, who worked with me on putting it together and is doing very well now. She, we, we keep in contact. And so she thanked us for being able to um, be part of that, um, that uh, uh, ordinance. So I could field any questions if you have any specific. No, I remember Desiree, she was a great um, asset to, to the community meetings, I remember. Um, yeah. And I, I guess I have one further question. Um, did you experience any hiccups in, um, in working in this policy? Uh, no, as I mentioned, you know, part of part of our approach to anything when it calls for a significant change is we mobilize people. Um, it's a strategy I learned many, many years ago, and that's why that's why um, you see the Move More Eat Healthy Committee and you see the Senior Advocacy Committee, our our interfaith group. Um, those are all segments of the population that have been formed over the last twenty years, and um, and whenever we have uh, a, a program or a project that is not controversial um, and we need support with, uh, we, we mobilize uh, them. And, and I, I, some of you, you know, Gabby, I know you see me do it all the time. And <laughs> Yvonne, you see, you know, it's kind of like, it's a chess game, man. You just sit there and you loft it out there. You see what the response is. And then, and then you, you know, you, 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 um, you know, work with our elected officials and, kind of, you know, understand that, you know, if they get pushed back, you know, it could, it could harm their, their position in, in terms of electoral. So it's, it's a, you know, it, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a talent, but it requires work, but, but you know what, uh, once you do the groundwork and you are able to segment your population into areas or groups that, you know, you can mobilize, it's much easier. And that's why uh, today, um, you know, I know I get asked all the time, how do you do that? And I say, it's easy. And it is easy because I did the work a long time ago. <laughs> so now it's a matter of making sure that you uh, you keep people informed and you um, are able to, uh, uh, you know, um, kind of be sensitive to the trends. What I heard earlier about vaping and, and all that's happening on the schools and with school children, it's a problem that we see. Um, and and we, we get on it really quick. Um, you know, I know at one time we talked about and we may have tried to work with the liquor stores or the lo local supermarkets to try to get them to, um, you know, to to reduce the sale of, of tobacco products and vaping to kids. But as you know, um, there's a lot of ways to purchase that, and unfortunately, because it's an economic uh, driver to all co economies, that um, you know, getting incentivizing. Um, um, a variety of stores from selling it, it's going to be very hard. It's almost like trying to take Coke out of McDonald's. It's just, it's just, it's just an uphill battle. But I think the little things that we do like this, um, and I and I owe you know uh, Providence St. Jude compliment for this, and that is, you know, really stepping up and and being part of the communities that they serve, which is Buena Park, Fullerton, La Habra, and Placencia, and then. Um, being able to, um, you know, support the Move More Eat Healthy, um, not only the, the the group, but also the initiatives has been very helpful. Most definitely.
can definitely count with the support of the La Habra community. Mm -hmm. True. Thank you, David. And do we have any questions for David? I saw a hand raised earlier. Yes. Ana Lilia? La mano levantada. Uh, gracias. Sí, uh, no pregunta, básicamente quería felicitarlo al señor de León por lo que explicó, por la ordenanza que eh, pasaron en marzo 2020. Y lo felicito porque el, el lograr eso está beneficiando a los vecinos que tienen usted de la Jabra. Gracias por eso. I'm afraid someone's going to have to interpret for me because I'm a, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, what was it? I can interpret. So she says thank you and she appreciates all the hard work that you've put into passing this policy in La Habra. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We have another raised hand here. Um, Norma? No. También le quiero decir gracias. Thank you, David. Y gracias este por todo lo que también nos ha apoyado siempre desde desde que empezamos de la David de León. Este, y ahora andamos también aquí con Ivonne, David de León. Así yeah. es que <laughs> ocupamos mucho su apoyo. <laughs> Gracias, Norma. Gracias, Ivonne. There's a question Hi. in the chat. Oh. From Rhonda. Hi, David. What was the question? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. Let's see here. Sure, I can read it. Um, hi, David. What if what if alternative healthier products were offered to retailers instead of tobacco products? And how much how much might that help stores consider reducing or stopping the sale of tobacco products? So uh, you you raise a, a, an excellent question. Uh, an, an excellent yeah, an excellent question. And, and, and you hit on the, the critical part of, of our economy. It's the consumer that really drives products in every store shelf. And, and you know, when, when you want to have a change, and I'll give you a good example, is um, I can recall the day when organic fruit or organic foods was not available. In fact, it was seen as very expensive in the local grocery stores. Today, you see it in all grocery stores because the consumer drove that there was a need for it. And, and um, um, you know, uh, if, if the consumer, if we can educate the consumer about, um, you know, the benefits of, of, um, of, of using healthier products and, and they respond to it, um, the, 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 you know, the, the companies are interested in selling product. And so they're going to sell whatever the consumer buys. And I'll give you one good, another good example. Uh, there is a, a, a bar. I'll show it to you. It's called Quest. I don't know if you've ever seen these. They're Quest bars. Okay. So um, I, I it, this one has a donut on there. Okay. So it looks really, really bad. But I, I'm diabetic, and I'm on a because of my knee replacement. I am on a. I'm, I'm, I'm working with a trainer and I needed to uh, increase my muscle mass because I was, um, you know, I, 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 because of my knee, I, I, I just, a lot of my strength had deteriorated. And the problem I was, I was having was not having enough protein. The problem with protein bars is that there's always a lot of sugar and there's a lot of carbohydrates and that's not good for people who want diabetes. So I went on the internet and said, what is the best protein bar? for uh, someone who's diabetic. And Quest came out as number one. And so you, I didn't believe that that was actually the case. So I went on the internet and I looked up the Quest manufacturer and I saw the products were in there. And I realized that it says here, chocolate sprinkled donut, which is like, um, uh, what would you say? It's heroin to a diabetic. You know, you don't want to have that stuff. But if you look at the ingredients they use, which are all natural, they produce the uh, flavors that that are that you're sensitive to eating this kind of donut. And so when you look at it, it has 20 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and um, four grams of net carbs. I can eat that and it'll fill me as a mid meal and it'll fill me up. And I've actually have increased my, and I'm not afraid to say this anymore, my, my um, fat, body fat percentage was 39%. Now my body fat percentage is 34% in, in, in six weeks. And so, so 
just simply looking at portions, simply looking at healthier products has not, and, and my, my, my muscle mass increased by 4%, 4%. And so you see, your question is actually well-received. It comes down to finding those products. And, and, I, and I, don't, I know I hear this all the time, it's education, but it's not education in, a, in an institutional perspective. It's more in a real life message so that people are able to understand uh, the benefits. And, and let's face it, we can all, we can all eat better. We can all be more active. You know, it's going to only improve, improve ourselves. So I hope that answers your question. It's a long answer to a, a very specific question. So. That was very helpful, David. Um, and I appreciate you sharing your personal experience. I think this is what um, it makes sense in educating the community about healthy retail and then coming from the consumers, then there's definitely hope that the stores could change what they sell. Thank you very much. Uh, no, no problem. I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that. Um, we, we, control, we control, the consumer controls the market. We don't think we do, but we do. We just got to mobilize. And I think that's a key point too, what you just said is that the consumer doesn't know that they control it. So if we educate yeah. them on the power that they do have, then they can make change in the community. Awesome. And I can share this because I used to I used to hear this all the time. They would say, "Well, you know what? You see this pebble? You see that ocean? You know how is how is me this pebble gonna gonna you know impact that ocean?" Well, you know what? If we gather a lot of pebbles, you know, and we toss them in, then all of a sudden we create a breakpoint, and that breakpoint does change that massive amount of water. And so that's why, that's why these groups like what you have right now, the LAC and any, I refer to as segments, um, that's what I've done. I, I, there are five pillars in every community, which is government, schools, nonprofits, faith community, and business. You need to divide your community up into those segments, meet with them on a regular basis, have relevant information to give them so that you're preparing for that opportunity to mobilize them when you need them. And the way that I see it is if, and it doesn't matter what it is, and I believe this because I've done this for over 20 years, if you engage three of those segments or pillars as I refer them to in any program, that program will be successful. If you only engage two, you've reduced the likelihood it's gonna be successful. You have to engage three, any three of them, doesn't matter. So. so helpful and inspirational. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David DeLeon. Do we have any additional questions? Any questions in the chat? I don't see any further questions in the chat. No hands raised. Okay. Alrighty. Well, if there aren't any additional questions, um, we'd like to take this opportunity to present you, um, David DeLeon with a certificate of appreciation for all your hard work and your commitment to protecting the health and the safety of the La Habra community. Um, we're also, um, we'll, I'll also be delivering a, a letter signed by our president and CEO of Community Action Partnership of Orange County, uh, Gregory C. Scott. So thank you. you. Know, yeah, and let me, share, let me share, yeah, let me share this. I've been in the business uh, for 35, 30, going on 36 years now. And everybody asked me, how, how does it feel to work 35, 36 years in this industry, I said, I haven't worked one day. It's not work to me. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, I'll be delivering these really soon, okay? So I'll keep No in problem. Touch. Good to see you, Norma. <laughs> Thank you, Lele Leon. <laughs> and I see All your right. daughter there, too. I haven't seen her a no. long time. <laughs> Hi, David. I'm Christian <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you. Okay. Um, if we can share the screen one more time. Thank you, David. All right. Okay. So um, next slide. It's time for our five minute stretch break. Uh, please grab some water, um, stretch your legs, and uh, we'll be back here at 5.05. Um, in the meantime, we'll be playing a, a short little slideshow. So um, we'll, be we'll be back at 5.05. Thank you, everyone. Oh, the audio.
Okay, it is now 5.05. Hello. Welcome back, everybody. Let's go ahead and unpin data here. Okay. So uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nabila Bolase, and I work at the Orange County Tobacco Use Prevention Program. Um, I actually work with the Community Action Partnership of Orange County um, with Yvonne and with Gabby um, and supporting them in, in uh, creating a, a vape and smoke free uh, La Habra and reducing youth access to tobacco products. So uh, for now, I'd like to introduce you all to Saula Martinez, one of the members of the Vape Free La Habra Coalition. Um, she will be presenting in Spanish. Um, if you'd like to listen to the English interpretation of her uh, story, uh, please go to the bottom of your Zoom screen, click interpretation and select English. And you'll actually be hearing Yvonne um, interpret for her. So uh, without further ado, uh, without further ado, uh, Saula Martinez. Buenas tardes. ¿Me escuchan? Sí, se escucha. Sí. Ok. Mi nombre es Saula Martínez, soy miembro de varios programas de en La Jabra y miembro del grupo de Way Free en La Jabra hace dos años. Bueno, yo les voy a contar mi historia, lo que yo viví en La Jabra. El problema de vapeo que he visto yo en mi comunidad es el humo de segunda mano y el acceso de los jóvenes um, que tienen al tabaco. Vivía yo en un apartamento donde los vecinos fumaban en la noche y cuando nosotros nos despertábamos estaba lleno de humo en nuestro cuarto donde nosotros nos dormíamos. Y como yo tengo un niño especial, cuando Cuando despertábamos, él le afectaba mucho porque se me caía en las mañanas, como que yo creo que le daba dolor de cabeza y se mareaba, y se caía, ¿verdad? Se caía de la cama o cuando caminaba, y por eso es que yo estaba bien enojada que no había como unas reglas o algo porque le afectaba mucho a la familia en general. Bueno, este problema también afecta a todas las personas que, import, que me importan, ¿verdad? Como mi familia, familiares, tíos, y como antes mi esposo, o todavía fuma, no sé, ya es mi ex, ¿verdad? Fumaba mucho. Creo que mmm, lo que más hace más daño es la, el humo de segunda mano. Hace mucho daño como a los niños menores, como adultos, 
porque ellos son más vulnerables porque su sistema inmune ya está más como bajo. Y uno, pues sí, todavía puede aguantar, pero ellos no. Así es que a mí me gustaría, ¿verdad? Que pusieran como una sanción muy grande para esas personas que fuman. Para que ellos, uh, antes de fumar en la calle o en los apartamentos, que, que tengan esa conciencia donde digan, ok, si me van a dar una sanción grande, pues no lo voy a hacer. O van a pensarlo dos veces para no pagar un, una multa, ¿verdad? Bueno, en conclusión me gustaría que me gustaría que nos hiciera, hicieran algo de prohibir la venta de tabaco a los jóvenes y reducir la exposición de humo de segunda mano en nuestra comunidad. Gracias por escuchar mi historia. A todos y a los miembros del Consejo de la Jabra y líderes comunitarios por su apoyo por reducir el acceso a los jóvenes al tabaco. Gracias. Awesome. Muy Hi, Ivan. Hi. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Saula. Um, Ivan, you are back on. Awesome. Thank you. Gracias, Saula. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Saula, for your presentation, for your story. Okay. Can we Gracias por permitirme contar un poquito de lo que he vivido, ¿verdad? Sí, gracias, Saula. Okay. Up next, we have we'll hear from the America on Track Flavors Work Group. Claire um, Claire Bram uh, is the executive director. Alejandra Cook is the program uh, program coordinator. Um, and their work group members are Ana Lilia Castro, Ramona Lopez, y oh, Jacqueline Murillo, Lizbeth um, Flores. So, let me see. So I guess we can start with Alex. Alex, do um, you want to share a little bit about your work group and uh, about uh, the policy? Hi, yes, thank you. Um, my name is Alejandra Cook and I am the program coordinator for our uh, tobacco-free Orange County. And I have on the call uh, also Claire Braver, she's our executive director. And also Ana Chavez, uh, the one that's translating in Spanish, is our health educator for the community. So thank you so much for allowing us to be here and present a little bit about our story. And um, if you can share our slide, that would be wonderful. One moment. Is it working? Yeah, it's working. Okay. One second. Are you able to see the timeline? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm sorry, I got kicked out. Okay. Are you good now? Okay. I got kicked out and it just says that it's sharing the Bila um, slide, but okay, there we go. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of walkthrough of what we've done and how the work started in the city of La Habra. I mean, it's the city of Buena Park. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so it started in February 12th. We had a fake committee meeting. And we started explaining um, what, what a flavor span was and the information that we had to share. And we were able to present this information to a group of residents that was very dedicated and to working on their community and also this and other decision makers. Um, it was very fortunate that the mayor pro tem, Sunny Park, she's also in this call, she was with us during that time. And she took a really, um, passionate approach to doing this particular um, flavor span for their city. She wanted, she wants Buena Park to be 
healthier, so she took this upon herself. Then um, in February 26th, we were able to meet, AOT staff was able to meet with the Buena Park uh, Mayor Pro Tem and the city staff to discuss the benefits of the menthol and flavor ban, and also adding a tobacco retail license. Then during that time, during the month of February, we were also able to meet our wonderful Flavors work group members that you'll hear a little bit about them. There's a group of 11 ladies that work very, very hard throughout the city, collecting data, um, going door by door, attending a lot of different events. Um, all of this happened during COVID, <laughs> February 12, 2021, and um, it was past July 27, 2021. So it all happened while we were in quarantine. So we were super helpful. Um, we were making sure that uh, we all have necessary equipment to be out in the community because we really wanted to capture everybody's um, input if they thought that the city should adopt a flavor stand and also adopt a tobacco retail license. We were able to do a lot of trainings with the ladies um, to make sure that they were all equipped to what they needed. So it was a lot of ongoing conversations. We spent a good six months of just a lot of communication between them, us, and the city. And Claire was able to provide a lot of training for the ladies, and we were able to translate all the surveys, questionnaire endorsements, and resolutions into English, Spanish, and Korean, so everybody in the community was able to give an input. During the March 16th, um, during the March 23rd, we had our first study session with the city council, and they gave us a lot of great feedback on what was needed to be added. And uh, we went back and we brought this information back to our city, our Flavors Workgroup members. And um, we were able to get more resolutions, more signage. So at, at that time, we had about 383 signed endorsements and resolution, resolution for, for all the cities, for all the community residents. And then on April 9th, um, we were able to review and discuss um, the TRL, so it's Tobacco Retail License Ordinance. And we were also able to provide flavor option ordinances. And this is when we received all the input for, from our flavors work group members on what they really care about, what were items that we needed, what were items that we needed to add. Um, we were very focused on what the community wanted since they were the ones out collecting surveys um, in, in their community. And we were able to include mobile vending machines. We were able to keep um, all the flavored tobacco products and, um, and adding also a menthol component. So that we were very fortunate working with everybody from uh, every staff personnel from the city of Buena Park. So if you go to the next page, on April 27th, we had a second study session where they came back and uh, we had a drafted ordinance and we were able to do a presentation to city council at that time. Claire was able to do the presentation on all the data that had been collected so far. And this was really nice because our youth and our adult uh, coalition members were able to do a presentation. They were learning how to speak to city council members and how to present and how to really capture the attention and, and the needs of that community. Um, then we were also able to meet with a lot of other agencies throughout the city. We were able to meet with the Buena Park uh, School District Superintendent, with our Flavors Work Group members and us, and give information about what really uh, is happening and, and what can we provide the students with. And then we also did, throughout the month of June, we did a comprehensive Flavors Media campaign. It was both in English, Spanish, and Korean. And this was all out throughout Buena Park. So we included, uh, 13 bus shelter ads, billboards, eight radio ads, two movie theaters, an atmosphere ad, which is like a, like a restaurant for uh, rock and brew. And then we did YouTube video ads, um, Facebook ads, Google ads. And we also did eight to eight website banners. And they all had information that flavors hurt, uh, hurt kids. And then that they just don't have nicotine. You know, it has nicotine, but it tastes like um, candy, so it's all very dangerous. Um, and this was all done that um, our community members were able to pick what they thought would be more beneficial 
impactful in the community and what would be more impactful as well. Um, on July, from the month June all the way through August, we were working out in the community. We were at every single event that the city hosted. Um, we were we were taking still more surveys, more notes, more information, and um, we never really stopped working out in the community. And all of our flavors work group members were out there supporting us. Um, at fairs and everything. So on July 27th, we were uh, we were able to meet at City Council for a public hearing for the tobacco retail license and flavors ban. And the City Council unanimously voted and passed the ordinance by zero. And as you can see, there's a picture of all of our ladies. Um, we were super excited. We we knew that it was a lot of work, and especially because it was during COVID time, so we needed to be super careful. And I believe we got about 1,300 and something public opinion poll surveys that we were able to get conducted. And this was the needs of the community. Um, I really do hope that you guys move forward with something like this in your city as well. If there's any questions that I can answer now. Do we have any questions in the chat box? I have a question. Yeah. Yeah, if there's anything I can answer. My okay. I think we can hear you now. Try. Okay, try it now, Gia. Hear me now? No? Sorry. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I was wondering since uh, they were they were sharing with us that they they put billboards and they advertise and all that. How much uh, how much money that you guys spent? So that is an awesome question <laughs> if there is on the line. So we are funded through the Department of Public Health um, in the city of Buenavista because our main target population to work on this because it, it, is, it is very expensive um, to provide staff and then also to provide all the training that we have going on with our community residents. So it was, it, it was a grant that they wrote uh, for the Department of Public Health. So I can answer that one. Uh, through that grant, we spent, oh. yeah, <laughs> we spent $35,000 on advertising to make sure that message was saturating the community. Okay. Well, that, that's not that bad, $35,000, but it's still a good, uh, good amount and uh, I mean it paid off you guys are in the map I've been uh, I've been hearing uh, the news and I'm very excited for you guys so congratulations to all the hard work yes congratulations to Buena Park for passing the flavor ban policy uh, do, uh, let's see. do you have any additional questions Comment. Okay, um, Nabila, should we go into the translation? So I can ask some questions in Spanish or? Uh, yes, um, I think Alex left. <laughs> uh, I think she was having connection issues. Um, so I'm going to require, so uh, we'd like to also introduce Ana Chavez, uh, who's also an health educator at American Track. Um, if you have been listening in um, into our Spanish interpretation, she is she's she's the one who's providing our interpretation. So we really want to thank her for being here and uh, uh, lending us her skills. Um, uh, so what I'd like to do um, is to have um, Anna interpret from Spanish to English. So I'm going to switch her. <laughs> um, so. Uh, for everyone, if you'd like to listen to, so the the Q and A will be done in Spanish with the with the Buena Park Flavors work group members. If you'd like to listen to the English interpretation, um, please go to the bottom of your screen and select English, and I'll be switching Anna over right now. Thank you. One moment.
Okay, you should be good to go. Testing, are we good? Okay. I can hear Anna and I can hear everyone. Okay, bueno. Buenas tardes. Uh, ¿Cómo está Ramona y uh, el grupo de, de Bueno Park? ¿Cómo están? Muy bien, gracias. Muy bien, bien gracias. gracias. Bueno, les quiero dar las gracias primero por unirse a nuestra reunión y hablar, en, uh, compartir sus sugerencias y experiencia. Um, Ana Lilia, uh, puedo empezar con usted. <ríe> um, le puedo preguntar primero, ¿por qué cree usted que esta póliza es, es importante? Sí, buenas tardes. Uh, mi nombre es Ana Lilia Castro, uh, soy residente de la ciudad de Buenapa, tengo tres hijos, soy yeah. líder de la ciudad, uh, estoy apoyando en comités como FID y RLA, y estoy ahorita involucrada apoyando, ¿verdad?, con American On Track en esta campaña que se llama On Track for a Tobacco Free, for a Tobacco Free Orange County. Uh, es importante apoyar esta póliza porque al iniciar nuestra colaboración en American On Track, en el proyecto On Track for a Tobacco Free Orange County, colaboramos junto a un excelente grupo de líderes de la comunidad de Buena Paz. Conformamos una fuerte alianza uniendo nuestros esfuerzos y llevamos a cabo nuestras uh, estrategias para concientizar a la comunidad sobre el beneficio de eliminar la venta de cigarrillos mentolados y otros productos de sabores de tabaco a su papel en la adicción de los jóvenes al tabaco. Es importante porque erróneamente muchos jóvenes creen que ciertos productos de tabaco con sabor son más seguros, menos adictivos y más naturales que los cigarrillos. Esta idea errónea, así como el hecho de que estos productos son menos duros de fumar y tienen buen sabor, están contribuyendo al aumento del uso de estos productos por parte de nuestros jóvenes. Es importante que sepan que desde el 2009 el uso de sabores en los cigarrillos ha sido prohibido en los Estados Unidos como parte de la Ley de Control del Tabaco y Prevención del Tabaquismo Familiar. Sin embargo, esta ley no incluye productos de tabaco que no sean cigarrillos como um, diferentes tipos de cigarrillos, deep, snappy, snap, tabaco sin humo, son, son un ejemplo, uh, cigarros de papel electrónico. La ley de prevención familiar, <coughs> disculpa, del tabaquismo y control del tabaco notablemente excluyó el mentol. Por eso, la forma más eficaz de reducir el uso de productos de tabaco mentolado y de sabores es adoptar e implementar una ordenanza que prohíba la venta de estos productos en su bella ciudad de La Jabra. Muchas gracias. Sí, muchas, gra muchas gracias, Ana Lilia. Muy, muy excelente puntos que hizo. Gracias. Sí. Espero no haber hablado muy rápido. Pues no. <ríe> sí, entendí a... lo que. Sí, gracias, gracias. Ana Lilia. A ver. Um, ahora, Lisbeth. Lisbeth, um, ¿cómo se organizaron um, y con quién hablaron? Bueno, hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Lisbeth Flores y también soy parte de el grupo de mamás de líderes comunitarias involucradas en las escuelas y todo eso. Pero la organización yo creo que estuvo desde la señora Claire, Ana y todos en conjunto, ¿verdad? Siempre hubo mucha unión, su, siempre hubo muchos, mucho apoyo entre unas y otras. Eh, yo creo que eso es lo que básicamente ha hecho el grupo fuerte para salir adelante con lo que se propone o nos proponemos, ¿verdad? Yo quiero compartir algo que a mí sí me llegó, ¿verdad? Que hasta la fecha lo siento. Este, pues yo tengo participación también con Heaven Children Hope y ahí pedí permiso para que nos ayudaran este, las personas que van cada semana este, a esta institución. Pedí permiso para que nos ayudaran a llenar las formas. Y sí, nos los dieron, ¿verdad? Entonces acudimos, este, Norma Guillermo, nos apoyamos las dos. Y muy emocionadas, ¿verdad? Este, con la respuesta de las personas, porque pasan ellos en carro. Y todos muy accesibles. ¿Qué están haciendo? Pues estamos llenando unas encuestas y queremos ver si ustedes nos pueden ayudar. Es para la prohibición de, 
los cigarros electrónicos y toda la mayoría por lo menos de la gente decía sí yo te ayudo dame yo te lleno y pasó una señora verdad mi experiencia para mí fue muy triste caminando y, y le digo señora me puede ayudar aquí con, con una encuesta y sí cómo no dice pero nada más te Buenas voy a buenas tardes a todos gracias por estar aquí empezaremos en unos minutos Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're getting cut off here. Thank you for being here today. We will get started with you in a few minutes. What is going on? Y pues ya, este, me dice la señora, nomás te voy a decir una cosa. Dice, yo no sé leer ni sé escribir. Si tú lees y tú escribes, yo te ayudo a llenar tu respuesta. Le digo, sí, está bien, cómo no. Y ya le empecé a decir, ¿verdad? Y me dice, quiero comentarte algo. Digo, sí, dígame. Me dice, tengo dos días de que acabo de ir a enterrar a un sobrino. En ese momento, uno no, no sabe si abrazar a la persona, si darle un apretón de manos, y menos con lo que estábamos viviendo de COVID, ¿verdad? Porque ella era su situación muy triste. Dice, pero qué bueno que hay personas como ustedes que se están dedicando a hacer esto para que esta tipo de productos no siga cobrando más vida porque es una tristeza muy dolorosa que me, a mí me está llegando me está lastimando porque acabo de enterrar a mi sobrino y digo pues en ese momento son en sentimientos encontrados de que uno no se espera esas pláticas verdad uno se espera estar con su trabajo estar haciendo las cosas pero en ese momento uno no encuentra la respuesta lo único que queda decir lo siento mucho y decir, por algo suceden las cosas. Pero dice ella, ya ustedes están aquí para ayudar a más jóvenes. Mi respuesta fue, ojalá y lo logremos. Pero con su apoyo, con su ayuda, lo vamos a lograr. Otra de las personas igual me dice, ¿sabes qué? Acaba de llegar mi hijo de Texas. Y me dice, yo siempre he sido fumadora de años desde que yo era de la secundaria. Me dice, mami, te traigo una sorpresa que te va a encantar. Y me da el cigarro electrónico. A la primera fumada que le doy, dice, yo me sentía que me ahogaba, sentía que me moría. Pero aún así lo seguí fumando. Pues, ¿qué pasó? Que resultó varios días que ella tenía dolor de cabeza y no se le quitaba. Y fue por este tipo de cigarros. Entonces dice ella, ¿qué estamos esperando a todos dañarnos? Entonces, pues son experiencias que nosotros vamos tomando, son cosas que nos van quedando. Y así fueron muchas historias, pero para mí fueron las más impresionantes es, estas historias. Y igual le digo, hubo mucho compañerismo, hubo mucha unión, hubo mucho diálogo. Y yo creo que eso es lo que nos hace un equipo fuerte. Somos 12, 13 personas, pero ninguna nos quedamos atrás, ¿verdad? Vamos a hacer esto, vamos a hacer otro. No es que diga yo lo hice, yo lo voy a hacer, yo lo quiero. No, es que vamos. Es lo que nos están diciendo entre todas. Vamos a ser el equipo fuerte para amarrarnos bien, para estar siempre unidas. Y ahí vamos. Eso es todo. Gracias. Muchas gracias, Lisbeth. Sí, lo podemos lograr. Con toda la ayuda que tenemos aquí, con todos los uh, líderes comunitarios que están presentes en esta reunión y los que no están presentes, podemos hacerlo y lo vamos a hacer. So, muchas gracias. Así va, a ser. Así va a ser. Lo logramos y lo vamos a lograr en todos los distritos que nos los propongamos. Lo vamos a hacer. Gracias. Gracias, Lisbeth. Ok. Ahora, le quería también preguntar a Jacqueline. Jacqueline, uh, ¿qué consejos uh, puede compartir o una sugerencia sobre, perdón, sobre cómo uh, podemos, cómo otras comunidades pueden implementar alguna póliza similar? Este, yo voy al final. Eh, la señora Ramona. No, no perdón. Va a sí, sí, perdón. Sí, Ramona. Es. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Ramona López. Soy una persona muy activa en la comunidad. 
y colaboro con, mucho, con muchas organizaciones y trabajo. Y mi pasión es abogar por los jóvenes. Bueno, sabemos que la industria tabacalera está usando muchas formas para atraer a los jóvenes y ellos se sienten atraídos, ¿verdad? ¿Por qué creo que es importante apoyar esta póliza? Bueno, porque sabemos que los jóvenes están siendo impactados por esta tendencia de fumar y el uso de los cigarrillos electrónicos por diferentes formas de vida que ellos tienen en sus hogares, en sus familias y muchos otros factores. Pero también los jóvenes con necesidades especiales están pasando por problemas de ansiedad, depresión, eh, comprensión de las, de las interacciones sociales, capacidades cognitivas, entre otras deshabilidades. Entonces, nuestro, nuestro equipo de Task Force trabajó muy duro, como han dicho mis compañeras, fue en plena pandemia, eh, el acceder a los lugares, tuvimos mucho apoyo de la comunidad, pero también cuidarnos, ¿verdad?, de nosotras mismas por lo que estaba pasando. Este, se hizo presentaciones, eh, personalmente sí se, se hizo una presentación con un grupo grande de padres con necesidades especiales porque, como les menciono, este, si los niños típicos tienen problemas, los, niños con, los jóvenes, niños con necesidades especiales es mayor problema, más grande. Entonces, este, se, hicieron, se invadieron los medios sociales, eh, grupos para las encuestas, presentaciones, este, se fue, eh, estuvimos siguiendo mucho a los consejos de la ciudad, a, a pedirle a nuestros concejales a eh, los comentarios públicos que apoyaran esta ordenanza y pues la, la apoyaron y la, y la pasamos. Ahora como comunidad les digo a ustedes que, pues, que se unan en concejales, negocios, organizaciones, porque es muy importante pasar esta orden, póliza que ustedes están haciendo y apoyarla, ya que es para una comunidad más saludable, para un futuro más de los jóvenes, y generaciones que vienen, ¿verdad? Y yo deseo, mi hijo tiene siete años, y yo deseo que en un futuro el, 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 la comunidad en la que está creciendo sea saludable. Mi hijo tiene necesidades especiales y hay padres también que tienen este tipo de problemas. Nuestros hijos, nuestros hijos con necesidades especiales sufren más, este, son más diferentes sus características que tienen, pero también abogo por todos los jóvenes en general porque son nuestro futuro, son nuestras generaciones y como comunidad les insisto a que, a, que, a que se unan concejales, negocios y organizaciones. Y muchísimas gracias por esta invitación. Muchas gracias, Ramona. Y con su apoyo lo podemos lograr aquí en la JARPA también. Muchas gracias. Okay. Y ahora me quería también preguntar a Jacqueline uh, sobre los consejos, uh, si tiene algunos consejos o sugerencias sobre cómo podemos implementar una póliza similar en, en otras comunidades. Sí, gracias. Eh, yo soy Jacqueline Burillo. Yo soy mamá de dos niños y resido en Buenapal por 11 años y también soy una líder activa aquí en la ciudad. También he colaborado con otras ciudades como Fullerton y ahora La Jabra para trabajar en, en mejorar nuestras comunidades. Uno de los principales consejos yo pienso que es el más importante de que yo, que yo podría compartirles en, en nombre de mis compañeras, porque así lo hicimos, es que para implementar una póliza similar en sus ciudades, es que se empieza a platicar con, los, con el concilio. Otro, obviamente a través de líderes comunitarios podemos empezar a dialogar con ellos para expresarles este deseo de tener este tipo de pólizas. Posteriormente, ya en coordinación con la organización que se trabaje, para obtener su apoyo y la asistencia de la organización, podemos continuar trabajando y pues comenzar simplemente a trabajar con su concilio para que la póliza se haga posible. Eh, es muy importante que consideren que sea dentro de un plazo apropiado y adecuado también que se, que se ejecute la póliza. Eh, algo que yo veo que además, otra cosa que podríamos trabajar es que además de continuar con la concientización de la campaña de no fumar o, o de tabaco de, de sabor y mentol, es que eh, se inviten a la gente de la comunidad a que usen sus medios sociales, sus grupos de chat, a hablar con familiares, amigos, vecinos, con las organizaciones que estén dentro de su ciudad, también con su distrito escolar 
para difundir el mensaje. Esto es, el mensaje es que lo que ustedes están pidiendo en el concilio, que se haga un eco en todo la jabra, que quieren esa ordenanza de salud, cual la que ustedes estén trabajando. Aquí nosotros la trabajamos diferente a ustedes, pero bueno, ustedes, la que estén trabajando, hagan la eco en toda la ciudad. Este, ¿Cómo? A través de comentarios públicos, en persona, electrónicamente. Cada vez que se discute este punto en su agenda, cuando se reúna su concilio, háganse presentes. O, eh, envíen correos electrónicos a sus concejales con copia al resto de todos los demás. Háganle saber este deseo de que ustedes quieren esto para la, para la Jabra, esta póliza de salud. También busquen la colaboración con otros líderes comunitarios y vecinos de las ciudades a la redonda. Es, esto, esto es muy, muy importante y muy fuerte. Entre más difusión se dé a lo que están haciendo ustedes, es mejor, ya que muchas personas de su ciudad pueden estar participando en otras ciudades en diferentes actividades. O sea que entre más voces de difusión haya, es mucho mejor. Aquí en Buenapar eh, hicimos este trabajo. Cuando hicimos este trabajo, confirmamos realmente que la gente y, sí quiere este tipo de pólizas de salud. Quieren salud para ellos y para los suyos, para sus, para sus descendientes. Así que yo he les digo que enhorabuena para ustedes los líderes comunitarios de la Jabra y los residentes que están en busca de cualquier ordenanza de salud que ustedes se, se, se propongan. Simplemente dialoguen, trabajen con su gobierno local para que puedan hacer esta diferencia. Y yo, yo creo firmemente, yo creo que todas las personas que, que estamos en este tipo de trabajo Creemos que lo último que debemos de perder son nuestras esperanzas y los sueños para mejorar a, tu, a nuestra comunidad. Y pues para mí creo yo que hay muchos consejos, pero para mí es, quise destacar este. Realmente hacer resaltar y hacer este, salir la voz de la comunidad para que nuestro concilio nos lo escuche. Gracias. Lo dijo perfecto. Muchas gracias, Jacqueline por su ayuda, por su ayuda y, su sugerencia, y sus sugerencias. Um, los vamos a, a tomar todas en cuenta y también um, ojalá que nos podemos reunir también otro tiempo para ir más en detalle sobre eso, ¿verdad? So, muchas gracias a, a American on Track por, por su, sus comentarios y uh, sugerencias. Y felicidades en su nueva póliza. Okay. <ríe> Gracias a usted por la invitación una vez más y estamos a sus órdenes. Gracias. 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 Okay. ¿Hay preguntas para America on Track? ¿Hay una pregunta? ¿En el chat box? No questions. Ok. Can we get the presentation back up, please? And Anna is now back to uh, English to Spanish uh, interpretation. Great. Thank you, Nabila. So um, up next, let me see. Our next speaker uh, is Al Luis Alexander Lopez. Uh, he goes by Alexander. He is a member of our La Habra Teens Against Vaping Youth Coalition. Alexander, please take the floor. Uh, hello, my name is Luis Alexander Lopez, but I prefer to go by my middle name, Alexander. I am 14 years old and I go to Washington Middle School. The vaping problem that I've seen in the community, in my community, in La Habra and school is, well, it's obviously bad for you. And then you see people smoke and you see people vape like around. And when they're doing that, uh, one other bad thing they do is they throw it away. And then sometimes they leave it on the floor. Not only are they harming themselves, they are also harming the environment. And someone once told me that a cigarette takes like 15 years to decompose. And because of that, how long it takes, that's like a really long time. And many people don't clean it up because if you go out and walk, you'll at least find at least one 
cigarette butt on the floor in just a small little walk. And the problem affects me and the people I care about is because one thing is that I have asthma and if there's people smoking around me and secondhand smoking and I inhale, it really affects me in a very negative way because of my asthma and then I have the breathing, the smoke. And then it's a very terrible situation for me and people that I care about because some people just don't want to smoke. But if a lot of people are smoking or vaping, that gets into the air. And then there are like children and if people smoke all around, then everyone's just going to be breathing in those terrible fumes and they're going to have problems that they don't want. In conclusion, smoking and vaping is really bad. And I'm glad there's organizations like this trying to prevent this and stop it before it comes a major problem. I would like to thank the city council members and the community leaders for your support in reducing youth tobacco. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alexandra, for sharing your story. Um, it really resonated with us and I think with me too. I know, I know it resonated with me. I know it resonates with a lot of others up here who are present here. I'm getting a lot of good comments in the chat box. <laughs> Thank you, Alex, Andrew. Okay. So next slide, please. So for our final segment uh, for our town hall, um, I'll be going over our program activities and our program end goal. Next slide, please. So in 2019, our, our coalition members, um, and CAP OC staff, Orange County Healthcare Agency staff were trained on how to conduct surveys. Um, and in two months, we collected, I think uh, the number's wrong, it might be 44 surveys in, in two months. And for events and activities during our first year, we provided eight presentations to different community groups. And we hosted 13 community events, conducted the Healthy Source for Healthy Communities by going out to, this, uh, to different stores and it resulted in the data that we presented in the beginning of our town hall today. Next slide, please. In 2020, um, our members participated in three in-person meetings and due to the pandemic, we switched over to virtual meetings. Some of them were done through Facebook Live, if you can remember, <laughs> but we moved them over to Zoom shortly after. And it was also during the introduction of our Cafe Charla, the coffee and chat meetings, which are meant to be a social hour meeting to bring together the community members in a different level to get to know them more. And I think, um, I know I really enjoyed them and we had five of them in the year 2020. And for events and activities, oh, no. <laughs> um, we started our Facebook group page and today we have 62 members. Um, we also had a Red Ribbon Week contest um, we made where we made a commitment to be brave, happy, and drug-free. And you can see in the picture in the corner, we have, um, I think that's Delilah, one of our um, Bayfree La Habra members' daughters. Next slide, please. And in 2021, which is one of my favorite years, I think, and if I call it favorite year, <laughs> um, we participated in, we had, well, we had nine Bayfree La Habra coalition meetings. There were formal meetings. And then we had seven Cafe Charla meetings from different, different themes, as you can tell from our slideshow. <laughs> um, and then also nine La Habra Teens Against Vaping meetings. And hopefully they will continue on um, to, we have, to have meetings. Um, and it was in this year where we created the La Habra Teens Against Vaping Youth Coalition meeting. Um, today we have over 20 members. So it's exciting to see youth active and engaged in this type of work. Um, in 2021, we also presented, had the opportunity to, had the opportunity to present to Senator Newman's public safety staff. And it was our youth members who were presenting in that meeting, so they did a great job. We also had uh, a chance to meet with three La Habra police officers this year. And we have, we're, we're growing a relationship and a connection with them where they're inviting us to events. So this was a great opportunity that was led by some of our members. And we also had the opportunity to, uh, to participate in a California Youth Advocacy Conference, which was maybe four days long, <laughs> but our youth members were there present and engaged. So we're very proud and excited for them. And our last activity, our most recent activity, um, 
We participated in a tobacco litter cleanup in September where 35 of our members uh, picked up over 1,153 tobacco litter items in just 45 minutes. So that's <laughs> quite a hefty amount. And then on top of that, we had, uh, we had um, the La Habra City Council member present. We shared a concern where there, we didn't see any um, signs for smoke-free parks. So we raised that concern with them and right away he texted another person to let them know we got to do something about this. <laughs> so we, we did a lot in these past three years and we're excited to continue our work and with the help of all of you here and we, we can make it happen. So thank you. Um, and I know that with, <laughs> with all of your support and from all the data that we now have, we can make this difference and we can reach our end goal. So our end goal is to work with the city of La Habra to reduce our youth access to tobacco through any of the following strategies. The first one would be to establish a tobacco retail license program, and that would require businesses to buy a license um, from the city before they can sell any tobacco products or um, and or <laughs> reduce the number of tobacco retailers in the city. We can also not allow the discounts for tobacco products or tobacco product samples. And there's also the option to ban the sale of any flavor tobacco products similar to how Buena Park did. So we have a, a number of options that we can go through. And I know that with the help of the community, our coalition members and our partners, we can make it possible. So thank you all for joining us today. Um, our last slide, <laughs> Navila, is an evaluation survey. So please take five minutes to fill out the post survey. It's going to be located in the chat box and we'll meet back in five minutes. So come back and put a thumbs up once it's complete, please. And I wanted to note that um, for the survey, if you'd like to complete it in Spanish, um, let me go ahead and just show it to you. Give me one moment. Um, so if you'd like to complete the, um, the survey in Spanish, you just need to go to the top right of the link and switch to the different uh, languages. Thank you very much.
if you've already completed the survey, please come back and put a hands up so we know you've completed it. Angelica, do you have a question? Tiene una pregunta? Oh. Sí, Saula. Yo sí tengo una pregunta. ¿Dónde voy a agarrar las lechitas para ponerlo ahí? Oh, <risa> ok. Sí, es Quiero la, aprender. Es, está abajo de la pantalla donde dice reactions. Reaction, Una carita okay. de happy face. Ok, voy a buscar. Ok, gracias, Aula. Estoy already talking in Spanish. <risa> ok, bueno. <laughs> well, thank you all. It looks like the most, the majority of us finished our um, our survey. Um, Nabila, do I have you okay to move forward? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So thank you all for joining our town hall today. This was a great, I think um, a lot of information shared today. So if you'd like a copy of the presentation, um, any questions that you have lingering, um, please feel free to send me a message or an email. My information's on the screen. And um, I guess we can all turn our cameras on for our traditional group picture. <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> I vote that we do a group picture. If you guys do this at every meeting, we should do one at the town hall. <laughs> okay. Norma Afghani, okay. Okay. Diana, Angelica, Percy, si pueden prender sus cámaras, Elena, Max, Norma, Karen, oh, Karen, I see you. Okay. Bueno, somos muchos. <laughs> um, Nabila, can you see everyone on one screen? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think I can only do 25 at a time. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> Hold on, let me see if I can do more. Oh, it's still it's still over two screens, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I have. Okay. So when it looks. Up. There, okay. see, we're gonna um, take the group picture and then we'll open it up for any questions or comments. Okay, we'll we'll do. So I, I don't know whose screen is what, but I'm gonna do screenshot number one. So one, okay. two, three. Big smiles, everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, give me one sec. <laughs> Just keep smiling, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You guys are good. You guys are good. You don't have to hold the smile. Hold on. <laughs> uh, okay. And then second group. All right. Big smiles, everybody. One, two, three. Oh, look at that. There's an entire family in that bag. Oh, my oh, goodness. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> They're all in our group, too. So. Oh, Thank you guys wonderful. for showing up. Okay. Um, Kirsty. Tercy, si tiene una pregunta o una, un comentario. Oh, do you have a question, Tercy? I'm sorry. ¿Ya tomaron la foto? Sí, estamos bien. Gracias. ¿Ya tomaron la foto igual? Pero ahí tienen más. ¿Sí, no? ¿Faltó? ¿Faltó salir? Ok. Um, Tercy, si tiene una pregunta. Sí, hola. Hola, buenas tardes. Este, sí, eh, bueno, pregunta no solamente eh, quisiera saber si nos podrías proporcionar una copia del reporte que dieron al principio este, y lo que mandaste tú de su presentación, que también las que hicieron la presentación de buena parte estuvo súper interesante. Entonces, este, ¿podremos recibir una copia? No, sí, por supuesto que sí. Um, 
Thirsty uh, is asking if she can receive a copy of the presentation and gladly, I can gladly provide it for anyone who is uh, interested in having a copy of it. Um, con gusto se, le puedo dar una copia de la presentación, Thirsty. Y también los datos que presentaron. <laughs> okay. ok, muchas gracias. Gracias, Thirsty. Thank you, Thirsty. Ok, bueno, si esto concluye nuestra reunión, ay, oh, perdón, otro comentario, una pregunta que quieren hacer antes de terminar. We have another question to make before we, we end our meeting today. I'm not used to this translation thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yvonne, thank you for facilitating. You did a wonderful <laughs> job. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you to Community Action Partnership of Orange County for uh, facilitating and holding this event. And a Chavez at America on Track, thank you so much for translating uh, this entire town hall um, for all of our Buena Park work group members and to the wanna... Mojave yeah. Coalition. Thank, oh, thank you, you for being here. I, I want to give a quick so shout out to Gabby too, to help who helped me, you know, with the presentation, translating. And, you know, leading all our meetings too, which is helping me lead, honestly. It couldn't have been, you know, done without Gabby's help. So thank you. Well, thank you, Yvonne. You did a wonderful <laughs> job and um, we're very proud of you at Community Action Partnership. So thank you. And thank you, HCA, for all your support. We appreciate it. Gracias, Yvonne. Y gracias, Gabby. Gracias a todos los de los programas que nos trajeron también. Y gracias, Lice. Sí, sí, gracias. Lisbeth, sí se puede y, este, sí, y a Norma me dio gusto ver a Norma y a Ana Lilia y a todas a cada gracias. una por Muy todo bueno. por todo el trabajo verdad y, y ahí vamos vamos la jabra sí, muchas gracias Norma ok bueno eso Adiós. Es gracias por la la presentación fue muy informativa, muy productiva y la verdad esperemos alcanzar la meta que, que se ha propuesto como lo ha logrado Buena Park. Hey, sí, muchas gracias, Cersei, por este comentario. Gracias. Eh, ok. Bueno, sí, uh, si quieren la, una copia de la presentación, por favor, envíenme un, un mensaje de texto para poder um, grabar su correo electrónico. 